Well, we have talked a lot, especially this morning, about the impact the COVID-19 pandemic is having on the economy, on the workforce. The unemployment numbers are something we haven't seen in many, many decades. But let's talk a little bit more about the path forward for a lot of the businesses as they're trying to survive. And uh, joining me right now, I'm happy to have Dr. Brian Marks. He's the executive director of uh, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program at the University of New Haven. Doctor, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, I'm curious what your vision of what the state's business climate is going to look like, saying starting right on May 20th and then let's say for the next 30 days after that. What is it going to look like in your opinion? Well, I think it's also important to understand context, but it, the shorthand to all this will be, we will have a multi-tier ascending waves of re-engagement. The governor's plan is staged. We will continue with monitoring, testing, social distancing. And of course, once we hit a vaccine, all those are, that's optimistic news. But the length and breadth of the recovery, it's going to certainly take a great deal of time. I will say, simply because everyone's going to flip the switch on May 20th in this staged fashion, provided we adhere to the governor's guidelines, to harken back to a book I read many years ago called uh, Shoeless Joe uh, by W.P. Kinsella, just because you build it doesn't mean they'll come. So a key component here will be having trust in our infrastructure, in our systems to allow these ascending waves of re-engagement to occur. We will also see a transformation and Connecticut may actually be in a very fine position given its manufacturing history, its current advanced manufacturing setup. So we'll see this in probably and possibly in areas of PPEs and uh, pharmaceuticals. So Connecticut could be positioned nicely. Will it be immediate? I, I, this is not binary. We don't turn the switch and it just happens. It's going to take time, this recovery. And I'm getting the sense that uh, as this is starting to drag on more, a lot of people think the amount of time it's going to take is growing more and more. Uh, but you mentioned before, before you started that answer, about context. What other context do you feel that me and a lot of people watching out there are missing, if any, at this point? Well, I think the, the numbers as to where we are is what's crucial. I mean, we did get our recent report of 14.7%. I will say that's understated. So we are in a deeper hole than the numbers are reporting, and that context is important. The other context and lessons we learn from what's going on elsewhere in the world is that if we open up too soon, we can see a second wave. And with a second wave, we could wind up reverting back to where we were. So we have to be very prudent, cautious. We have to balance our public health issues against the economic issues. All right, it's uh, nothing. You can't force the populace to do what you necessarily want them to when it comes time to go out and patronize a lot of these businesses. So assuming we do a reasonably good job with testing, with contact tracing, to try to build up that public confidence, what do you think our economy will look like at the six month mark from now and maybe the one year mark from now? Just how bad or how much of the recovery could be done by then, assuming we've restored some of the public confidence without a vaccine yet? So this is definitely not going to be a V-shaped recovery. I, I sort of referred to this multi-tier ascending waves of re-engagement. Uh, I think optimistically to say it would be too optimistic to say we're going to be right back where we were immediately pre-COVID-19 uh, and the governor's order. That, that, to me, is too optimistic. I think what we have to realize is there's a transformation going to occur, and it's not going to be we're going to quickly forget what transpired over these months a year from now, this will be known probably as the COVID-19 pandemic recession. 
and it's going to be etched in all our memories forever. And as a result, I think we'll see cautious steps, mm -hmm. but it's it's not, at least my hope is, it's not going to take 10 years the way it took us to come out of the Great Recession. Let's remember this recession is triggered by a public health crisis. It's not a financial crisis at its inception the way the Great Depression or the Great Recession was. So th that provides me some optimism that our recovery will be sooner than later, not 10 years. But at the same time, uh, we're going to see some businesses unfortunately fail. We're going to see a transformation in education in my field in medicine. Yeah. So as we're re-imaging our economy here in Connecticut, that's going to take time. We do have a good technology base here. So that bodes well for Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. Well, doctor, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to give us that. And that's a good point. The cause of the recession could be a very, uh, a very important factor that it's not any sort of inherent instability, but it's something more transient. And while two years, a year, 18 months waiting for a vaccine, it's hard to look at that as transient, but uh, it, it very well could be the case in the long run. So, Doctor, thank you so much for taking the time. We do appreciate uh, your insight on the matter.